Welcome. My name is Dale Timmer, and I'm a Newport News Master Gardener. Uh, this presentation has been developed as part of our annual Go Green Expo, and will give you all the information you might need to set up a worm composting bin, also known as vermiculture. Master gardeners are trained volunteers who serve as an educational resource to the community and through public interactions, encourage and promote environmentally sustainable landscape and gardening practices. The Master Gardener program is sponsored by Virginia Tech University and Virginia State University and is found throughout Virginia, the United States, and in many foreign countries. You may be wondering why vermiculture is, is the right choice for you. So one, one thing it provides you with a year-round source of compost and organic plant fertilizer. It helps us reduce, reuse, and recycle by taking all those food scraps that would normally go into your trash can are now being food for the worms to turn into compost. It is non-polluting. It takes up less space than a regular compost bin. So if you're in an apartment or have limited yard space, you can still make, make some homegrown fertilizer with a worm bin. It can be a profitable commercial business, and it's also interesting for all ages. All right, now that you're ready to start assembling your worm bin, here are the materials, the few materials you're going to need to put this bin together. You're going to start out with a 12 gallon plastic tub such as this. The only criteria for this is that it needs to be opaque. Worms are light sensitive, so if you have a clear container, they're going to be unhappy for the most of the time they're in there. Uh, so this is a 12 gallon plastic drum. You're going to need some bedding for your worms. And I use what is called coconut core or coconut fiber. These come in dehydrated blocks that need to be rehydrated before you use them. Uh, they can either be purchased in single blocks or three packs. And I usually use two blocks of this to start a worm bin. You also need your worms, and I have two, I usually get two containers of worms. These are all available from a bait store. The coconut core is available uh, from PetSmart, and the bins were purchased at Target. And altogether, these materials cost about $25 and should take you about 30 minutes to put these together. You also need some newspaper to top the bedding when you finish. And tools you need are a drill with a 5 16 bit and a bucket for soaking the coconut core. And this soaking the coconut core is the longest, uh, most time consuming part of this activity. So I'm going to soak this first and get this ready for our for being added to the bin and start a worm bin. This whole process takes about 30 minutes to put together. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding the coconut core to the bin and adding about a gallon of water for each block of coconut core. For each block of coconut core, you're going to need one gallon of water. I'll add the second half gallon of water, and you can see in there that the coconut core has already expanded considerably. And this will take about 30 minutes for it to sit and reconstitute, and then we'll be able to put it in the worm bin and start with the bedding for the worms. Now that you have your coconut core already rehydrating, you can set that aside and we can address the next step in putting your worm bin together. One thing besides a dark environment your worms are going to need is some ventilation. So what I will do, and this is a bin 
that I is actually already in use. It has worms in there, but you can see that it has a row of vent holes along the lid, as well as a row of vent holes along the side on all four sides. So I'm just going to demonstrate drilling a couple extra holes in this one. Now that your coconut core has absorbed water and is the consistency of a damp sponge, it's ready to add to your worm bin with the ventilation holes drilled. You want the moisture level of the coconut core to be about the same as a damp rag. So take a handful of coconut core. You want it to be wet enough that it sticks together like a ball in the hand, but you want it to be dry enough that you can squeeze any excess water out before you add it to the bin. Once you have your coconut core bedding in the bin, the next step will be to add the worms. <laughs> These worms can live for two weeks in the refrigerator waiting for the time they're ready to be released into the worm bin. They'll just go into a dormant stage in there. So you add your worms. Add some food scraps for them. And I'll talk more about what you can feed and how you can prepare the food for them best. We have some, some green beans, some lettuce, some apples and some tomatoes in here. And I'm just gonna pull back a little bit of the coconut core so it's just barely under the surface. And then cover it up lightly. And once you have your worm, your bedding, your worms, your food in there, the last thing you do with your worm bin is to add newspaper as a topping, as a buffer on top. And I just tear it into strips and I will soak it, before I put it in the bed, I will soak it in leftover water from the coconut core. So I'm going to do that. And if you have kids, they love this job. <laughs> Get it wet, and then again, just like the coconut core, wring it out. And just lay it across the top of the bedding. This will help maintain the moisture level in the bin. Kind of also keeps it a little bit darker in there for the worms. And as I will talk about later, it's a way to regulate the moisture level inside the bin. Once you have your worm bin assembled, next thing to do is find a place to store it. Worms like moderate temperatures, ideally 55 to 75. Uh, so if you have a basement, that is an ideal location. If you have a garage, that's a good location. You could even store your worm bin in a closet or under the sink. Uh, the things you want to avoid are extreme cold, for having the worm bin any place where it's in the sunlight. All right, now that your worm bin is set up, you found a good location for it, you need to think about what, when, and how you're going to feed your worms. Worms can go an extended period of time, as long as three to four weeks, without being cared for. If you need to go on a vacation or have a trip coming up, just feed them some extra food before you get started. Worms will eat in a healthy 
environment eat their body weight in organic material every day. And the finer the food is chopped up, the easier it's going to be for the worms to eat and digest this food. As we demonstrated when we set up the worm bin, you want to put the food just under the surface. These worms we use, red wigglers, are designed to eat surface material as opposed to night crawlers, which are going to go deeper and wouldn't be appropriate for a worm bin. The food should disappear in about a week. If you have food lasting longer than that, just cut back on the amount that you feed them. If it's disappearing before then, keep adding food at that point. The better fed they are, the more they're going to reproduce and continue to consume larger and larger amounts of food. You'll see on your slide a list of do's and don'ts regarding food stocks. Almost any fruit or vegetable will be suitable for them. If you're not sure about a food, try using a small amount and seeing how the worms react. Under the don'ts, meats and dairy products tend to uh, not decompose as fast and can lead to odor problems. Uh, citrus fruits such as lemons, grapefruit have high acidic content, content which is not desirable for the worms and obviously if you are applying fertilizer to any uh, yard clipping you don't want to add that to your worm bin. Now that you've set up your worm bin, your worms have been happy and healthy and been eating well for three or four months, it's time to start harvesting your worm compost. And to comparison, we'll look at the coconut core as it started, and then again, what it looked like after running through the digestive system of worms for about four to six months. So here's the coconut core, and you can compare that to this rich black soil that still has lots of worms crawling around in it. And this is your worm compost. Now there are a couple different ways of harvesting your worm compost. One of them is just the hand sort where you pull the compost out, sort through there. If you find any worms, you throw them back in and the rest of this compost is ready to go into your garden. A second way to harvest your worm compost is to start feeding them on just one end of the bin and do that for a couple weeks. Over time all the worms are going to migrate to that end of the bin and then you can just go in and scoop out the compost from the opposite end. And a third method is the vertical sort method where you just take a pile of the worm compost, put it outside on a sunny day. As the sun beats down on this, the worms are going to migrate to the center of the pile, and then you can just come in and pull off the top couple inches. The worms will continue to migrate further into the pile, and you can do that and get some worm-free compost to add to your garden. And if there's a couple worms in there, it's not going to make any difference at all. It'll just add to the nutrients. Once you've harvested your compost, it can be used in several ways. For mature in-the-ground plants, you can use it as a side dressing and just gently work into the top couple inches of your soil. If you're starting seeds uh, in pots, as you bump them up to different stages, you can add a little bit of worm compost as a nutrient source for your growing plants. Or if you need a quick shot of nutrients, you can soak the worm compost in water and create a compost tea that you can add to the plants for a quick hit of nutrients.
troubleshooting your worm bin. If provided the right environment, your worm bin will continue to thrive and produce a, a long-term supply of nutrients for years on end. Some of the possible problems you might have could include moisture levels. If the bin is too wet or too damp, it's going to inhibit the growth and lifespan of the worms. Remember we said your worm compost bedding wants to be the same moisture level as a damp sponge. If it's too wet, I would add newspaper to the top and let that over time absorb that extra moisture add dry newspaper. If it is too dry, add wet newspaper as a buffer and bring the moisture level back up. The temperature, ideal temperature is between 55 and 75 degrees. So make sure that you're keeping the bin out of the sun, away from very cold circumstances. One problem you may have when you first start with your worm bin is runners, worms trying to escape looking for a happier home. To avoid that, the first couple days I start a worm bin, I will have a light source on during the evening to keep them inside the bin. Once they come out see that light, they're going to retreat back into the bin and within a couple days they'll settle into that environment. If you have any odors coming from your bin, it's going to be related to too much food, the wrong food, not decomposing quick enough. So just cut back on the amount of food you add and also as with everything to moderate the conditions in your worm bin, add some more newspaper. The next few slides will show you some resources to help you maintain a happy and healthy worm bin. The last slide will give you the phone number for the Virginia Cooperative Extension and you can call that number at any time and reach the help desk and let us know what problems you're having with your worm bin and we will get back with you directly and get your problem solved. Thank you for watching. Happy worming, all.